Hello, everyone. Welcome to ASAP's vlog series. My name is Marie Herman. I lead study groups to prepare students for the Certified Administrative Professional, Google G Suite, and Microsoft Office Specialist Certifications. I also teach technology and career development programs to office professionals. Today, I'm going to be sharing some tips with you on collaboration in Microsoft Office programs. Many of us are being called upon to collaborate with others in our workplace, and we don't necessarily know how to use the share functions within Microsoft Office. So I'm going to show you a quick overview of how to share your files today when you're working with your colleagues. I'm going to escape out of here, and I'm just going to file and create a new presentation. Let's say this is going to be the big sales presentation for our customers. And so a team of us are going to work together. It's going to be Marie Herman and Marie Herman. Now, if I want to share this file, the first thing I'm going to have to do is save it to a OneDrive or a SharePoint account. Access can be restricted by your company. They may have set restrictions that prevent you from inviting anyone outside your company to access your documents. Uh, that's a company by company decision. If I click share, because I haven't yet saved this file, it's going to ask me to save it. And notice I happen to have two OneDrives. I have a business OneDrive for my MRH Enterprises LLC, and I have a personal OneDrive for my own personal account. If you choose one versus the other, you will have different options related to sharing. When you share to your personal account, you can create a link that anyone can access. However, when you save to your business account, you can restrict that further. You could create a link that anyone can access, or you can create a link that only your colleagues in your company can access, or you can further restrict it to just specific people. So I'm going to save this to my business account, and I'll call this file uh, sample presentation and say OK. It's going to upload that presentation to OneDrive. As you can see, it's fairly quick to do that. At the top, I have anyone with the link can edit. And if I click on that, it opens up some additional options for me. When anyone with the link is checked, on the bottom, the other settings options allow me to decide, do I want them to be able to edit that document or not? If I uncheck this box, then that means anyone with the link can access the file. They can view it on the screen, but they can't actually modify it. I might want to add one additional layer of security with that and choose to block the download so that they can't even save that file to their own computer. In this case, though, I am going to be allowing editing. So I'll check that box again and notice block download grays out. It's no longer available to me. I can actually choose to set an expiration date with this link if I would like to. Because anyone with the link can access the file, I might want to have that additional layer of security. So maybe I say this is going to be valid until tomorrow. I could also do one additional layer of security and require a password, where even if someone has the link, they would need the password to be able to access the file as well. So there's a couple of different ways that you can control the access to your document. Even though anyone with that link can get in, you can make it only until a certain period of time, maybe with a password, and have some of those restrictions maybe only be able to view instead of edit. I'm not going to bother setting a password on this particular one, but notice it tells you you will need to provide the password to others in order to use that. So I could send this. I can click Apply. Now it's gone back to that original window that we had, and I need to enter a name or an email address. You could pull a name from your global address book, or you can type the email address. So I'm going to use an alternate address that I have on my own domain. And then when I click the name for Marie Herman, I'm now added in. And so I can just click send to send this message. The link to the sample presentation has been sent. I can close that, go over to my window. I have some extra emails here. It should come through, yep, very quickly. So here's my Marie Herman shared a file with you. I'm going to click sample presentation. This will open that file in PowerPoint online for Office 365. 
Notice it shows me who the author is, the Marie Herman. This is currently open on my desktop in addition to be open here as the recipient online. And so this is telling me that the author of the document that sent it to me is online on their desktop at the moment, but they're online. So they're open at the same time. You're both looking at the file at the same time. I can go back, or before I go back, I'm gonna add a new slide here. And I am typing this online. I should see this on my desktop fairly soon. And so I've added in a slide here with some typing. When I go back to my desktop, it's already been added. I have that second slide already added on my desktop. And I have a purple icon here that says Marie Herman, my collaborator. Um, and so it's telling me that the person I shared my file with is online making changes to the file right now. So I can tell when someone's in my file working on it. I can add a new slide. I am typing on my desktop. You should see this online fairly soon. And now when I flip back to the online version, I'm typing this online. I should see this on my desktop fairly soon. If I go here, here's that new slide I just added. I'm typing on my desktop. I should see this online fairly soon. And it tells me Marie Herman added this slide. So I know who made the change within the document. And so as we're going back and forth collaborating, uh, we could jump onto Teams and use Microsoft Skype to connect and talk while we're making these changes. But you can see the changes come through very, very quickly when you're working with these shared presentations. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this and I'm gonna flip back to my sample presentation. Here is that purple icon showing someone was online. And if we take a look at it, you'll see it just takes a moment for it to gray out and disappear, indicating that the person has closed that document online. They're no longer in it working on it. So you can see there was a little bit of a lag time there, but it was fairly quick. It was just a few seconds before that showed up. If I click on my share in the top right corner again, uh, at the very top with send link, there are three dots that will bring up more options. And from there, I can manage access. So here was that link where anyone with that link could edit. Um, I can click the three dots there as well, more options. And so from here, even after I have created the link, I can change the expiration date. So you'll remember I set it for the 15th. If I want to extend it, they call and say, you know what, I need access till Friday. I'm not gonna have time to work on it. I can change when that link expires or I could change the access that they have. Uh, maybe instead of an expiration date, I would wanna change that to something else. So in this case, I've decided they've gone in, they've made their changes, they're done, I'm actually gonna delete this link now. I'm gonna remove this link. Am I sure I wanna do that? Because this will affect everyone who uses this link. Yes, I'm sure I'm gonna delete this link. I'm gonna close this down and I'm gonna go back to my original email. Here was my sample presentation. I just removed that link. So notice I get an error message now when I try to access it. So your recipient will not be able to access it when you have deleted that link. So this link has been removed. Sorry, you can't get access. I go back in to share. If I wanted to limit it to just people within my company, I could change that shared link to people in that company with the link. Same option of allowing editing or not. Uh, there is not an option here for the expiration. People with existing access, or specific people, same thing. There's not an, op an option there for that deadline access. Uh, but all you would do is pick one of these options that you want, click the apply and type in the actual address. Alternatively from here, you could choose to send a copy to someone. And what that does is it puts a copy into an email 
And it's just exactly the same as if you attached a PowerPoint presentation to an email. It's not a shared presentation. It allows them to get a copy of the presentation, but it is not actually shared. Um, and so that's a little different. If you were to send a copy, you are not sending a shared presentation that you're both going to collaborate on at the same time. You're going to end up with two separate files when it's said and done. So that is the share option that is available to you within Microsoft Office. This has been around a little longer than Office 365, but it's really come into its own with the Office 365. And so I do encourage you to look at this as a way to share your documents with other people within your company in particular, when you have to work on the same file instead of ending up with 18 different copies that you have seen. Uh, and the last thing I'll mention is that at the top where you have your name of the file, there's a drop down that shows you a version history. And this will show you the modifications that were made. And if someone messes up the file, you can go back to an earlier version and work with that instead. And so I could go back to my original file before I shared it, for example. Um, and you'll see multiple versions in there where it really does give you a lot more flexibility of being able to control um, that you want to accept all the changes that people have made in that document. So thank you all for joining me for this ASAP vlog series. I hope you found it helpful and that this has given you a better idea for how you can collaborate within Microsoft Office.